Uh, hi everyone, it's my privilege to welcome Kuldeep Dantewadia, founder of Reap Benefit. Uh, Reap Benefit is one of uh, Games partners and has done a lot of interesting work uh, teaching and inculcating entrepreneurship skills, entrepreneurial skills also uh, in a lot of youth. Uh, without further ado, I want to introduce Kuldeep. Hi Kuldeep. Hi Shantanu. Uh, How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Good. Very good. Kuldeep, uh, uh, for our viewers, please tell us a bit about what Reap Benefit does uh, and uh, what you've been doing in the last so many years. Uh, so Reap Benefit, uh, Shantanu is a social enterprise. Um, uh, what Reap Benefit does is uh, it's in the space of citizen problem solving. So our mission is how do we get citizens to become citizen problem solvers and start solving local issues um, in their community, in their neighborhoods. Um, the focus is on three things, hyperlocal data. How can citizens uh, become sources of hyperlocal data? And how can this hyperlocal data lead to quick local policy changes and work with the local government? Uh, the second pillar of our work is local solutions. How do we develop hyperlocal solutions so that these solutions solve issues like waste, water, sanitation, again, which we see at a neighborhood level. And third is the local community. How do you work with the local government official, elected representative and the government? Uh, we have predominantly worked with young people uh, in schools, colleges and uh, communities because we believe that uh, developing the skills of solving real issues uh, has to start young. And we call them, we say that this is civic muscle building. So you build this muscle of solving uh, civic issues and our research has also shown that this is probably the fastest way to build resilient citizens uh, who have 21st century skills. Uh, so we have worked with about 33,000 odd students. They have all, almost invested half a million hours uh, in public problem solving uh, or citizen problem solving. About 250 local solutions have been co-developed. About 100,000 local data points have been collected. And we do this through grassroots mobilization and we have a technology platform. Uh, so we have a on the ground and technology approach to this. Sure. Kuldeep, tell us an interesting case story of yeah. maybe some of your students who have gone ahead right. and become, you know, uh, sort of real life problem solvers. I don't want to even call them entrepreneurs, but real life problem solvers. Right. I think that'll be interesting. Right. In, in fact, in fact, Shantanu, uh, I, I, there are some who have become entrepreneurs as well. So, wow. uh, mm. so we call these young people as solve ninjas. Uh, we believe that every community needs four types of ninjas. Uh, ninjas who have the ability to report uh, and engage with authority. Uh, somehow our education system does not allow for questioning and therefore we don't question authorities. Um, the second type of ninja is uh, young people who uh, run campaigns, local campaigns, not internet based campaigns only. Uh, third is how do you build solutions and uh, fourth, how do you build technology solutions? Mm, right. Mm, so mm. I'll give you, I'll give you uh, three examples. Uh, in fact, one just, I got a message. So it's a good uh, segue here. Uh, one of our uh, Sol Ninjas, Vibha Nadi, we worked with her five years back. Uh, uh, she went through our citizen problem solving process um, of discovering, investigating, solving and sharing uh, local issues. Uh, now she's a law student. She's doing her first year of law. Uh, not only did we engage her in the citizen problem solving process, but we created a community of which she was a part of on an ongoing basis. Today, she has started her own organization called as Outlawed. Uh, what Outlawed does is it creates uh, digital content uh, to explain various legal aspects uh, to young people uh, and make it relevant to young people. So how do you demystify the Indian constitution? How do you demystify local policies? And how can a young person um, uh, actually share it uh, and uh, make a, uh, legal nuance simpler? So she started her own organization called as Outlaw. Uh, and uh, this is a digital platform uh, she has created her, uh, herself. And in fact, she's also raised a small round of funding and grants from another very interesting social enterprise uh, called as Indus Action. So she's an entrepreneur who started a citizen problem solving journey, but today is actually uh, created an entire digital content around it. Right. Excellent. Excellent. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful case study. So we continue what you're saying. 
the other uh, the other uh, sol ninja is and 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 what this goes to show shantanu is that if you uh, any form of uh, entrepreneurial building you have to first or sports you have to first activate the grassroots and then you have to take them along but once you take them these people have the the wherewithal and the ability to do it so we are just a platform uh, the second example is uh, shriya shankar um, uh, in fact she was not even a part of our ninja creation program uh, she heard about us she joined our community um, for the last one year and she's a national level basketball player and so on and so forth but for the last one year uh, shriya had started an initiative called as project sitara wherein uh, she in her local community had identified an orphanage and did a lot of significant deep work by getting young people and helping these young girls in this orphanage to kind of overcome uh, their not only their learning outcomes but also their uh, the the social and emotional difficulties they are going through uh, as of last week uh, um, uh, shriya has decided to register her organization um, and uh, now she is trying to take the whole project sitara template um to lots of government schools uh, uh, in the city um so that's the second type of uh, ninja who's very very entrepreneurial and very quickly uh, shantanu um uh, one one two young people uh, one uh, his name is pranav shikarpur he was a part of our sol ninja program but another uh, young person alok um, he he's not been a part of our program both of these boys were instrumental in helping reap benefit come up with a covid response in about 48 to 72 hours um wherein they were instrumental in developing a hyper local dashboard wherein you can um, uh, crowd source local information around covid uh, and get local help and all these three examples demonstrate that these young people not only are solving issues but it's a part of their daily life now excellent um i'm actually at a loss for words uh, 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 I think, uh, I think there is something in the model that you guys are doing for certain. I, I, I would have to actually go more deeper in that. But uh, you must be very proud, and I'm so happy that um, there are real case studies where children and youth become problem solvers, and then from that take it to real life and become entrepreneurs. So that's excellent. Uh, this, the next question I have, uh, Kuldeep, is right. There are now, you know. pre covid and post pre covid and covid and post covid is going to, uh, completely going to be different right at least in behavior uh, and therefore i wanted to ask you what are the challenges you are seeing in the ecosystem uh, which may be affecting the way that you are thinking about it maybe affecting your philosophies as well uh, and how are you transforming as an organization uh, how what are you thinking about right so shantanu i come from what the world calls as the not for profit ecosystem or civil society ecosystem uh also i think uh, uh we we also have one leg in the edtech or the education ecosystem but we are modeled around um uh, not for profit or social enterprise principles um i am i am absolutely concerned about the whole not for profit and social enterprise ecosystem i think uh, um my hunches what i'm reading what i'm speaking with people um there's a possibility in the next 1 to 2 years there'll be massive consolidation and about 40 to 60% of the not for profits might disappear um and it's not a healthy sign for any society when civil society organizations are disappearing correct um especially in a country like india wherein uh, uh, they play a very very constructive role and i saw this happen in covid probably all we all saw it in very very uh, different uh, ways uh, so that is very very scary uh, to hear of huge uh, funders uh, csr organizations some rightly so some maybe unfair uh, pulling out uh, of support uh, uh, to the uh, to some not for profit so it 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 is looking scary suddenly also the focus around funding is everything and anything to do with covid um, uh, and therefore a lot of uh, very worthy initiatives which need support uh, will be kind of uh, be pushed in the sideways um because that relevance will not be there at uh, at uh, this point uh, so that is uh, that i i'm seeing that happening at a very very uh, uh, huge uh, uh, level and uh, that is scary uh, from an ecosystem uh, point of view that how how how, how will we go about uh, things and what is going to uh, happen uh, i think what helped us a little bit shantanu is that we guys uh, gautam and i we started this very young 
and we were not probably the best fundraisers at that point. So we had developed some muscle of uh, revenue generation, keeping in mind not for profit principles. So that has helped us uh, manage this period uh, reasonably uh, uh, well. Um, from, from our point of view, um, uh, Shantanu is uh, our entire work uh, was in communities with real problems. Um, uh, it was very quote unquote physical in nature. Uh, so that everything takes a back seat. Uh, we had a model wherein we worked with uh, uh, well-established educational institutions so that we had revenue generations and then low-income government institutions and communities. So we are seeing that, um, we're definitely seeing that for the next three, four months, uh, we probably will not be even entering these uh, ecosystems which we were working in uh, initially. That is uh, one big piece. Secondly, uh, also there is just so much fear that uh, people are not comfortable with, you know, people outside the ecosystem in terms of a school or a college coming and working there. So that is the second big uh, concern we are seeing. And our work was getting your hands on, getting your hands dirty. Uh, now, uh, anything uh, which is in the community and getting your hands dirty, there's generally a fear around it. So that kind of disrupts our work also at a very, very core level. And maybe for the next one year, seeing a garbage pile outside your house, or not having access to water might also not seem very relevant and important uh, because government machinery is focused and rightly so uh, in solving uh, uh, an issue which in the short term is leading to so many issues. So probably even the municipality and elected representatives will have a specific uh, uh, agenda and focus. Sure. Um, I had a side question actually, which is that, uh, which is that a lot of the work that you do has helped children think uh, or youth think about how to solve a problem, how to communicate it, how to document it. You're mentioning your salt ninjas. Um, uh, I mean, is there, is there a birth of another type of a ninja right now, which, which focuses more on uh, building that trust uh, and, and looking at um, sort of very focused people issues, customer issues, you know, maybe there is somebody, who's thinking a little, who steps back a little and sees what are the dynamics of these things? What are the dynamics in the community? Yeah. Uh, I, I think maybe that's, that's going to be required because people are now not going to be able, they don't know what's wrong. They don't know what's, uh, what they want to do really. They just fearful. And I right. think uh, that might be one opportunity as well, where you look at people who understand the dynamics, the psychology, etc. So, so Shantu, it's interesting you say that hopefully by next week uh, uh, with two other very interesting organizations, Indus Action and Colabex, uh, uh, we are going to come up with something called as a COVID Ninja initiative, uh, <laughs> which is at a hyper local level. Um, yeah. uh, uh, Indus Action will get the strength of uh, how do you uh, make, uh, how do you use rapid response surveys and come up with very quick policy insights. Um, which can be used by the government uh, or elected representatives. Um, Colabex will come uh, with the whole experience of how do you get communities together and have a human to human connection and re benefit will come to the table with how do you actually problem solve and don't not get bogged down because um, these issues, there's no one solution. Shanto. So your, your rate of failure is always much higher than your, um, your notion of success. And um, I think re benefit is pretty good in communicating uh, that. Excellent. Excellent. I think that, I mean, uh, it was just an idea, but I think you guys have actioned it out. That's excellent. Uh, moving on to the next question, Kuldeep, uh, game as an alliance, as a global alliance for supporting mass entrepreneurs and micro entrepreneurs, what do you think we should be thinking about? Uh, and, and one of our big segments is supporting and nurturing entrepreneurial mindsets uh, in young people. What do you think we should be thinking about? What should we be figuring out? I mean, nobody has answers to many of the questions right now, but what are the right questions to ask? Right. So that's a tough question to answer, Shantanu. But what, what I know from my experience, I can share. You know, what's very interesting about game is you talk about entrepreneurs and not startups. And that in itself is a very important distinction in terms of culture and mindset to call out. Um, I'm very certain that you will have fewer startups um, mm. happening in the next few years, but mm. there's a great opportunity for us to have more entrepreneurs uh, coming out. And there's a distinction because startups today generally 
uh, when you talk about a startup, it starts with the funding. It mm. starts with a certain, there's a, there's a stereotype, you know, but an entrepreneur is uh, nothing but a, uh, is a person who's trying to fulfill a gap uh, and is an opportunity seeker. Um, so, uh, and we will now be getting loads and loads of opportunities like this um, mm. uh, in the coming few years, because there'll be job loss. Uh, there will be, uh, you know, uh, people kind of curtailing their movement. So in a way, I mean, the, the necessity will be the mother of all these great inventions. And uh, I, I have a feeling that if done right, there is a, a, a I think game should uh, use this opportunity to kind of really uh, make individuals feel that they can be entrepreneurial in their local setup. So I feel they should probably double down. Uh, and this might not seem like the right thing, but double down on how to have conversations around entrepreneurial uh, mindsets and and maybe have a more stronger focus um, in uh, tier two, tier three towns because um, uh, all our all the people who have helped us build these cities have moved back and uh, probably there is a better opportunity there to kind of build this entrepreneurial mindset and get them to be more entrepreneurial in nature. So the micro or nano entrepreneurs which you people talk about, I think there's a great opportunity to build that workforce um, uh, at this point. Of course, then there are more strategic things which we all read, which is credit support uh, to small and medium enterprises and MSM, MSMEs and things like this, which I'm sure there is enough uh, thought in the game ecosystem to bring about. Uh, but taking two steps back, Shantanu, what, what I was trying to say is that there, there is a big need. Uh, let me give you an example, right? Uh, please, uh, please. Yeah, that'll be helpful. Yeah, for example, uh, parents uh, uh, in, in the, in the, in, in the post-COVID world, if they are going out and working and children are learning from uh, home, right? That in itself is a great entrepreneurial opportunity now. Right. That how, how, what do you do? How do you, uh, you know, engage with uh, um, uh, th those children? What support can be provided? Right. There will be a huge need for just support and care systems right? for the elderly people. Uh, that's a huge opportunity wherein if you can have hyper local entrepreneurs taking care of those things, um, uh, that will be great. Maybe there's a great opportunity for hyper local teachers. Right. Uh, within your communities, within your areas. So I, I feel that uh, uh, there is this opportunity which will come uh, around food, right? There will be, uh, my, my feeling, my instinct, and I might be wrong, I rather eat in a place where the trust factor is very, very high, wherein I've been to that place many, many times. So it will be somebody from my community. So if, say, somebody in my community is being laid off, but can, you know, provide meals to 10, 15, 20 families every day, then that becomes a source of income, which, which I think is going to grow. So the point I'm trying to make here is that there will be a lot of these small entrepreneurial opportunities which will start getting created. And I think game should seize this movement and ask people to try it out because you now what is the risk, right? If I don't have a job, I might as well try something uh, rather than uh, just be sitting there. So I, I see that as a great uh, gap, which a lot of people are not uh, seeing. Um, sure. That's uh, where, uh, that's what I would... Uh, push for. Um, uh, so that's my larger focus on the entrepreneurial thinking pass. Then there is, of course, the more cognitive, strategic and tactical things to do in terms of credit support, fund support, uh, market linkages and things like that. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. I, and well, I have some other follow on questions for later. Um, maybe, maybe you can also spend a few minutes and tell us what is the support that you might be seeking from for re benefit from game and how can probably you can support the larger ecosystem of game and its partners. Yeah. So, um, I think for us, uh, Shantanu as an organization, now we'll have to start thinking uh, like in this post COVID world, how do we keep our principles, but also reorient. And I think from game, it'll be great to know if in the ecosystem there are, I would say, organizations which don't do the similar kind of work, but have the similar operating principles, right? And how do we, how do we understand from them on how they are reinventing themselves without losing the core and the heart of their organization? I think that is one. Uh, secondly is uh, uh, how do we kind of um, uh, stretch ourselves uh, to kind of 
have a longer survival period, right? Because if you create, if you look at a situation, if there's going to be no inflow for the next say six months, eight months, 12 months, then just for us, it'll be like, how do we strategically think that through? Um, uh, we are seeing some opportunities also come up, but I'm just giving you, I think learning from peers, I think will be very, very helpful in a time of uncertainty and community uh, coming up uh, that sure. Day. Sure. Uh, how can I help uh, the ecosystem? Shantu, I think I'm a big believer of trying to build communities. I lost my way a few years back. Uh, I thought that, you know, you can undercut community and do what you're doing. But if you really want to do any ecosystem building work, anything which has to do with behavior and mindset, I don't see any shortcut uh, apart sure. from uh, uh, community building. So I, I would probably uh, love to share my experiences uh, in the community. Uh, also collaborate with people. So for example, if we get an opportunity um, and uh, but that but there's another organization which can do a better job then i think it's important to kind of you know hand over that opportunity to them uh, i one of my uh, friends um, uh, and one of my mentors uh, my friend shared this but then my mentor uh, venkat krishna he shared it on one of his talk he said that if you are on the eighth floor of a building and somebody is at the fourth floor uh, one is you just put the rope down and ask them to climb up but the better thing and the greater thing is to come down, walk down from the eighth floor to the fourth floor and take people with you, right? Uh, we have certain, we are better off than most organizations. So in a way, how can we collaborate and kind of grow the ecosystem? And I'm very invested in like helping the not-for-profit civil society ecosystem move forward. Uh, so for us, for me, it'll be very important how we collaborate, how we kind of share work. And one such example was what we did during COVID. Uh, there was a great group within Bengaluru form, which had Hasiru Dada, which does great work in rack picker, uh, with rack pickers. There was Citizen Matters. Uh, there was uh, representatives from uh, Citizens for Bengaluru. So at that point, we realized that uh, the only strength we could bring at that point was a basic tech tool, which did ba some basic amount of uh, de uh, demand mapping and supply mapping. But that we realized later became a very useful tool uh, for the government to start taking decisions um, and you know seeing it at a city level. So we there play to our strength rather than, you know, saying that we'll also do this or we'll also do that. So how do we build more collaborative communities? I think that's what I would want to offer to the ecosystem of entrepreneurs. Excellent. So on that very positive note, um, Kuldeep, thanks for, uh, thanks for this webinar. Thanks for your time. Uh, there are uh, lots of action points as well. We can work together with it and with our partners as well. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and on that positive note, I'd uh, end this webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you.